This is Smart Poker Study episode 227, Becoming a HUD Master, Non-HUD Stats, and Ranges. In last week's strategy episode number 226, I discussed the number of hands it takes for reliable HUD stats, as well as individual stat sample sizes. It's poker study time, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in for another HUD-related episode. So I'm hoping that you all become HUD masters by the end of this month with the podcast episodes, the Twitch streams, and all the practice that I know you are putting into learning your HUD on the felt. And speaking of your HUD and all the practice, it's time for me to let you know about my HUD-related webinar at the end of the month. It's called Effective HUD Use Webinar. It's going to be held on Saturday, March 30th, at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So you can learn more about the webinar at smartpokerstudy.com slash HUD webinar. And please use offer code POD10, that's P-O-D-1-0. Use that for 10% off. Now, I know that for many of you, your HUD is just a confusing jumble of numbers. And even if you understand that uh, the statistic is high or low, you might not know how to use that knowledge to exploit your opponent. Well, that's all going to change after you watch this webinar. I'm going to teach you how to understand the most important HUD statistics and how to use them to make positive EV decisions. I'm going to teach you these seven things that you need to know about each statistic before you can utilize it in game. And the only way you're going to learn to utilize them is by stepping into action and focusing on one statistic at a time as you play your sessions. And of course, in the webinar, I'm going to help you do exactly that. I am also going to give you, now this is my favorite part of the webinar, I'm going to give you five different HUDs that you can use to focus on one stat at a time and to exploit five common leaks that your opponents have. Now, this webinar comes with 18 bonus items, and I guarantee these are going to help you learn to use your HUD effectively and confidently. So once again, please visit smartpokerstudy.com slash HUD webinar and use offer code POD10 for 10% off before March 30th. And of course, I hope to see you on the webinar. And I want to give a quick shout out to Chris Barker, my newest Patreon insider. He went to patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy. He selected his level of support, clicked that support button, and now he's on the poker train with me and all the other insiders here. So thank you very much, Chris Barker, for supporting the show. I really do appreciate it. Please, if you want to follow in Chris's footsteps, go to patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy. Alrighty, I've got a lot of HUD-related questions to answer today, so please visit the show notes page for everything I discuss, along with screenshots and links at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod227. Alrighty, it's question and action time. So it's been a while since I did a Q&A, so just a quick refresher. Uh, for each question, I'm going to start with my answer. It's actually going to be an action to take to improve your skills. Then I'm going to give you some background information about the action. And this could be strategy information or maybe more technical details on stepping into action. So we actually have four questions today from Jarrett Demain, Rob Messine, Justin Robbins, and Jim Gargiulo. Let's give them the actions that they're looking for. Gambate! Warm it all up! Everything you've got! Come on, you hate! You want to live forever? This first question comes to us from Jarrett Demain, and it's about becoming a HUD master, and it's going to take lots of trial and error. Here's Jarrett's question. Did you do some videos on your smart HUD, or a manual perhaps, so I can start using it without too much trial and error? Well, thank you very much for that question, Jarrett. So here's the action that I want you to take. Take a look at your HUD and list out all of the stats there. Now, prioritize this list in the order that you want to learn the statistics. I recommend putting your preflop stats before your postflop stats because preflop happens with every single hand dealt. So you have more opportunities to exploit your opponents utilizing those preflop stats. Once you've chosen your next statistic to focus on, turn all of your studies towards that for one week. 
do a Google search on that statistic and learn all you can, like the definition, the formula, what's a good percentage, what is too high, what is too low. And of course, try to learn how to exploit those numbers. For every play session this week, you will look at that one statistic before making every decision. Your goal is to exploit your opponents at every opportunity when their percentage tells you they have a frequency issue. So here's some background on that answer. Now, it sounds like you really want to learn your HUD as quickly as possible, and you said without much trial and error. But I've got to be honest, it's going to take a lot of trial and error to learn to use your HUD effectively. Uh, just think about what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to turn a ton of numbers into exploits that you can do subconsciously. That's what being a HUD expert is. You see a number and you immediately know like three or more ways to exploit that number. So for many of you, if I tell you that somebody's flop seabed is at 85% and that that is way too high, you might understand that it's too high. But have you ever put thought into how to exploit somebody who seabeds too frequently? If the answer is no, then the various ways that you can exploit a frequent flop C better, they're probably not going to spring to mind, right? So here are some potential exploits. You can bluff raise them if they're capable of folding. You can value raise if they don't fold their C bets against raises. You can call with your bluff catchers. You can call to slow play with your strong hands. And lastly, you can call on the flop, then bet to steal the pot when they check on the turn. So that was just five quick and simple ways to exploit a frequent C better. But I came up with this list of items because I've noodled on how to exploit C betters so many times. What you have to do is learn all you can about each stat in your HUD and what the various percentages mean. Then you have to make sure you understand what's a high percentage and a low percentage. Finally, you can work out exploits based on the percentages shown to you. Here's something I'm going to discuss in detail within the webinar. The best exploits come from the extremes. This basically means that exploiting a player's c-bet percentage, it's best done when it's extremely high, like 85%, or when it's super low, like 25%. But you're going to have to watch the webinar to learn more about that. Alrighty, thanks again for that question, Jarrett. Question number two comes to us from Rob Messine, and it's about learning from poker sites that do not allow a HUD. Here's his question. I bought your book, How to Study Poker Volume 2, as a way to get disciplined about the game. However, I didn't realize that I need tracking software to follow along with the program. I was wondering if you had any ideas on how to adapt the program for someone who can't use tracking programs. I play on a non-HUD related site. He actually gave me the name of the site, but I don't want to mention it here. Suffice it to say, they don't allow poking traf poking, poker tracking software nor HUDs. So he goes on to say, this site doesn't allow trackers, but being in the US, it's the best I can do. Please let me know what you think. I'm up for whatever it takes. Alrighty, thanks again for this question, Rob. Now, here is the action I want you to take. Begin utilizing game tape for your play sessions. Game tape is recording your sessions so you can watch them back later to review your play and your opponent's play. Because you're an online player, you can record every single session you play. This is going to give you all the details for every hand that you're dealt. All right, so for some extra background on this for you, Rob, and everyone else, game tape, it's the greatest advantage that you have over live poker players. If they want to record a hand for later study off the felt, they have to whip out a piece of paper or Evernote or something in their phone. They have to record all the important details like the players, the stacks, the board cards, the pre-flop action, the post-flop action, the showdown hands, all that stuff, right? Because you're an online player, you are super lucky. You don't have to do any of that, right? You just have to record game tape. All the details are right there for you to replay and learn from. So here's my five-step plan for you to start learning from the online hands that you play. Step one is to get a decent microphone or a headset with a microphone so that you can record your thoughts as you speak through the decisions that you make while you're playing. Also get a screen recording software and I use OBS of course. And after you get the software, find some setup videos in YouTube, and those are going to help you set it up lickety-split. 
Step three is to start recording every session that you play. Step four is as you play, have a piece of paper in front of you where you can write down the time that an important hand took place. Maybe you didn't know if a bluff seabed on the turn was a good play, and that happened at 15 minutes and 5 seconds into your session. Write that time down on a piece of paper and maybe a simple note that says, not sure if this was a good double barrel bluff spot. And then step 5 is after your session, maybe directly after or the next day. Replay the game tape and go directly to the timestamp that you wrote down. Review the hand, take notes, then start using whatever method you want to study it. You know, I often put hands and ranges through Flopzilla, of course, but you can use any kind of program that you feel comfortable using. All right, and that's how you're going to learn hands from sites that don't allow poker tracking software. You need to improve your game, and this is how you're going to get around their restrictions, right? Now, Here's my last bit of advice. Find a site that you can play on that allows Poker Tracker 4. I live in California, so I play on America's Card Room. So if you want to try playing on ACR, and of course it takes Poker Tracker 4, or it allows Poker Tracker 4, please use my affiliate link and the offer code SPSPOD for 27% rake back. All you have to do is go to smartpokerstudy.com ACR. Click the link, download the software, create your account, use offer code SPSPOD to get playing. And by doing so, you're going to be supporting the show as well. All right, just a few shout outs today. Ben F. purchased Poker Tracker 4 through my affiliate link. He went through smartpokerstudy.com slash poker tracker 4. That's the number 4 at the end, of course. He made the purchase. He supported the show. He downloaded the poker tracking software. And then, of course, he forwarded to me his purchase receipt. When he did that, I, of course, replied back with my smart HUD. So he's utilizing that HUD to exploit his opponents. And speaking of the Smart HUD, Marco Gasco purchased Smart HUD directly. He already had Poker Tracker 4, so all he needed was the number one HUD to exploit his opponents. Because that default one at Poker Tracker 4, it's not the worst of HUDs, but it's definitely not the best. It's not color coded, it's not really grouped in the best of ways. Unlike my smart HUD, of course. So all Marco did was he went to smartpokerstudy.com slash smart HUD. He made the purchase. And then along with the HUD, he also got video links to, uh, it might be like 12 videos to help him get more out of Poker Tracker 4 and the smart HUD, of course. And then my man Mick purchased preflop online poker directly through me. You can go to the show notes page for a link to get it through Gumroad. He got the PDF copy as well as the audiobook for making that purchase th- directly through me instead of going through Amazon. Not that you can't go through Amazon, but he went through Gumroad to get the PDF and the audiobook at the same time. Alrighty, and my last shout out goes today to Yoris Schetz, who purchased Poker's Bread and Butter webinar. You can find a link in the show notes for that. Oh, and of course, David Ridge purchased Getting the Most Out of Poker Tracker 4. He's had Poker Tracker 4 for a while, but maybe he's not that comfortable with it yet. Well, this webinar is going to make him the most comfortable he can be with Poker Tracker 4. And hopefully, if he goes through the webinar and puts everything into practice, he's going to become a PT4 master. All righty, back to class, poker people. This third question comes to us from Justin Robbins, and it's about a Bovada HUD. Here's what he said. I'm currently playing on Bovada, which does not use HUDs, I believe. I know of a few other rooms like ACR and Nitrogen, but I'm not really sure which ones will let me use the HUD. Do you recommend any one specifically? All righty, thank you for that question, Justin. Here's my action. Get Poker Tracker 4 because it does work with Bovada, or you might know it as Ignition Poker. Lots of people don't know about it, but it sure does work with it. So here's some more background for you, Justin. Uh, Poker Tracker 4, pretty recently, I think towards the end of 2018, they made some updates so that it works better with Bovada, um, or like I said, Ignition for the U.S. players. It works just the same with any other sites. It saves all of your hands and it allows you to use a HUD. So if you go to the show notes page for today, once again, smartpokerstudy.com slash pod227. You're going to find an informational link there about how to configure uh, Poker Tracker 4 to work with Bovada or Ignition. 
you're also going to find a link there to get the optional hand grabbing app. Now, you need this hand grabbing app to, to, I guess, download or to save or to grab the hands from Ignition and Bovada. It pulls the hands directly from the site and then uh, it imports them into Poker Tracker 4 so that you can start reviewing them and use the HUD simultaneously. Alrighty, thanks again for that question, Justin. And the final question, number four, comes to us from Jim Gargiulo, and it's about the stat percentages and how they equate to a range of hands. Here's his question. In your book, Preflop Online Poker, in Chapter 2, it talks about break-even percentage, and it uses the villain's raise first in for that position as his range. Am I supposed to use the raise first in stat by position instead of their overall VPIP when I'm breaking down hands? All right, thanks for that question, Jim. So here is the action, and then I'll give you some more background on it. Here's the action. Whip out Flopzilla or Equilab and build raise first in ranges for the most common statistics you see. Print these out and keep them on your desk. Next, review 10 hands off the felt where you faced an open raise. Look at the player's positional raise first in percentage and find the range on your range sheet that you created. Now, given their range and your hand, was your play, whether you folded, called, or three bet, was it a positive EV decision? Of course, record any mistakes as you review these hands so that you can try to learn from them. Also, utilize these ranges as you play your sessions. The more you use them on and off the felt, the more comfortable you'll become with ranges and especially that raise first in statistic. All right, so here's some background for you, Jim. Raise first in is one of those stats that's best viewed by position, and it equates very well to the exact range of hands your opponent plays. So for example, Bob123, let's say his raise first in as a total is 30%. But he raised you just now from under the gun. His under the gun raise first in, maybe it's 12%. You want to put Bob123 on a roughly 12% range and base your decisions against that. Not that total 30% statistic. 30% would probably include hands like King-10 offsuit, Ace-9 offsuit, and King-2 suited. Now these hands are not normally in somebody's 12% under the gun raise first 10 range. In your question, you had mentioned VPIP. Now VPIP is how often they voluntarily put money in the pot. So it counts calls and raises from any position. So you don't want to use that when you're assigning uh, your, your opponent a preflop range based on a specific action. You want to find the stat that's most related to the way they enter the pot and then assign them a range based on that. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. I just gave you four different potential actions to take. Number one, was prioritize your HUD stats and begin learning them one at a time. Number two, utilize game tape for your play sessions. Number three, get Poker Tracker 4 because it does work on Bovada or Ignition. And number four, was build raise first in ranges for the most common statistics you see. Now it's your time to shine. Choose the one that's most applicable to what you're striving for right now and step into action. Playing and studying with purpose are the best ways to improve your game. To help you out, here are some inspiring words from Lieutenant Ratchek in Starship Troopers. This is for you new people. I only have one rule. Everyone fights, no one quits. If you don't do your job, I'll shoot you. Do you get me? We get you, sir! Well, this episode is not complete until you head to the show notes page at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod227. You can go there for screenshots and all of the links I discussed today. And I might have given you 10 different links today. They're all there right on the show notes page. smartpokerstudy.com slash pod227. Thank you so much for listening today. Make sure you step into action with today's challenge if you want to get the most out of the episode. Please visit smartpokerstudy.com slash HUD webinar to learn more about the webinar on March 30th and use offer code POD10 to get 10% off. 
And of course, this was a q and A. I'll probably run the next q and A in about three or four weeks. So send me your questions. Sky at smartpokerstudy.com. All righty, poker people. In the next Strategy Friday episode number 227, I'm going to share with you my complete poker setup from my desktop, the computer, the monitor, my keyboard setup, and also the different software that I use to play and to study poker. It's going to have both video and audio components to it, so be ready for that. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so thank you very much for sharing the show with other poker people. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet.